Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the American Tier 8 Premium Heavy Tank, the Sergeant Slaughter T-54E2. Now obviously this is the WWE version of the T-54E2, they're both exactly the same tank, just this gets the Sergeant Slaughter perma camo on it, which was probably one of the better looking WWE tanks, right, because it didn't look too garish, it was just army green camo, right? And, yeah, the, the release of this tank, this tank has two guns, has a single shot and a three-shot autoloader. Now, the single shot is okay, but the three-shot autoloader is absolutely incredible. It's so devastating. This tank is so incredibly powerful. It's just such a good tank. And this is the OP version of the T-77. So, everyone got the T-77 for free in one of the season passes. That is a solid tank in itself. It's just balanced. This is the more OP version of it. And when they balanced the T-77, they were trying to avoid making another copy of this tank because it was too good in their eyes, which is, it is an absolutely fantastic tank. This clip is so deadly and it reloads so quickly. It's got pretty decent armor. It's not great armor, but it's decent. It's, you know, enough to ricochet shots here and there, enough to make people have to aim, that sort of thing. And, yeah, the clip is is lovely, especially when you see stuff like an SU-152 and you sit there and you go, well, I'm going to have no problem penning you. Goodbye, sir. Have fun with your garage, because that's where you're going. Yeah, it's, it's just such a ridiculously good tank. It's one that I will always say is worth it. When people say is the T-77 worth it, I say, yeah, because it's a decent tank, but... If you're going to go for a tank that's similar to it, just get the Sergeant Slaughter because it's just, it's ridiculously good. And it's a hell of a lot of fun. I mean, it's got 226 pen on its AP rounds, 255 pen on its premium APCR. And that's going to be enough to face whatever you're going to face in the game, to be honest. And that's pretty nice. So, in terms of a crew on the T-54E2, I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Trap Mechanic, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Run and Gun, and the Off-Road Driving. I run, that is what I pretty much run on most heavy tanks, because that obviously lets me get up to my top speed easy enough. It helps my gun out as much as it humanly can, which is great. And as an autoloader, obviously, you want to be hitting most of your shots. In terms of equipment, I run optics, vert stabs, and a powertrain. Powertrain just give me that extra top speed, but also give me the engine power boost I need to be able to ma maintain that top speed because it is a little bit sluggish. It is the slower version, because that's the thing that the T-77 has. It's an incredibly quick, heavy tank. This doesn't quite have that top speed, and it also doesn't quite have that engine power, so just helping it there is what I want to do. So, so far in this game, you've seen us kill a lot of tanks. We're up to 3.4k damage, 166 assistance. We managed to get rid of the wheelie boy. We managed to get rid of the Hellcat. I was a bit frustrated because I think I hit the wheels of the wheelie boy just before I managed to finish him off, which gave him a free shot. We then get hit by artillery, which puts us down to 382 hit points. But we nearly reloaded and we're ready to go again. And we're on a kill-tacular mission. We managed to find this Draugon. It's like, well, hello, Mr. Draugon. I'm just going to miss that shot because I aim terribly. If we hadn't missed that shot, we were able to kill the Draugon there, but it is what it is. We take a hit from something along the K-line. It's like, what, what was that that just took some of our hit points? Okay. We're up to 4.1k damage so far. We're having a really good game, and I can't back up too far around this corner because of whatever it is on the K-line. But that T-34-3 is in a place that I don't really want him. If I roll well enough, I can kill him in one clip. Well, I can definitely kill him in a clip now. So that's what the aim is. So we get a shot into his back end. I'm, I was hoping to trap, it, trap him there and get him tracked. But unfortunately, that doesn't happen. And we get kind of lucky there, to be honest, that that shell went round that wooden post because we aimed directly at that wooden post. So I'll take it. We're up to 5.1k damage. We shut down that T-34-3. And again, I don't know how many kills I'm on because we don't have a kill counter. It would be really nice if we did because, yeah, I don't get why we don't. But now this Barask is coming in behind. He's fired one on the move. He's got one left, which means he can kill me. And it's like, okay, no, please don't do it, dude. i am just nearly got the clip in. It's like, hello, Mr. Barask. Get one into him. He bounces his shot, and we finish him off. Again, that's where the Sergeant Slaughter or the T-54E2 is really nice because the armor, like I say, isn't the best, but 
people have to aim. They can't just auto aim and pen you, which is great. And that's exactly what the brass tried to do, and he failed. And we got to shut him down. So we're up to 5.7k damage with 447 assistance. We're only on 144 hit points, which is not what we want to be. So we're just waiting for this clip to go in. Obviously, we're reloading APCR now because we ran out of standard rounds. And now there's this AC4 experimental behind us. It's like, well, I, I'll just pop over to finish you off, sir. Are you going to give me a shot somewhere Come in between the buildings? Yes, you are. Goodbye. And now there's only three tanks left on the enemy team. It's still 5-3, so this game is still very close. But there's a TD, a medium tank, and an artillery. It's like, okay, so the artillery I'm expecting to be somewhere over here. Maybe the TD or the medium tank as well, because they do like to hide in that corner. It's like, is this light tank going to find anyone? Nope. So now that we know that that corner is safe-ish, because that light tank's cleaned it out with his vision, we can move forward. We don't have to worry about anything shooting us from behind, which is great. And I'm actually on eight kills, and it's like, well, I'm now nine kills, just like that. And it's like, oh my god, we could be on for a pool's medal. We low roll! We low roll on the Draugen! Oh, if we'd, if we'd rolled well in... If, we, oh, if we'd rolled for around our average of 360, we would have killed that Draugen, and we'd have had a pool's medal. Oh, that's so frustrating. But now we've got to wait for the clip. And it is a T-78 and a Draugen that's one shot. But we're also a one shot for them, which makes this whole thing really awkward. It's 4-2. And it's like, you know, this will be awkward for us. Now it's 4-1, though. The Draugen tried to YOLO the Deathstalker. The Deathstalker shuts him down. And it's like, that now it's on the mind. Now, you know, it's sometimes nicer to not know how many kills you're on. Because now it's on the brain. It's like, oh my god, I'm on for a pool's medal. Where's this T-78? He spots us. I think, hey, it's a tier 6. I'll be fine just poking out and get the shot in quicker than him. Nope. 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 Because the T-78 the T can't pen us really that reliably with the standard AP. But with the premium AP, ACR that it gets, yeah. And unfortunately... He shuts us down, which means we finished the game with 9 kills, 6.2k damage, 685 assistance, Ace Tanker, Radley Walters, Devastator of the High Calibre, Top Gun, 2.3k base XP, a really great game for the Sergeant Slaughter, and just that little bit of overconfidence, especially when you're on 9 kills and you're thinking, oh no, I don't want this Deathstalker to kill the... I think what it was, essentially, it was impatience, right? I thought, oh no, this T-78's poking out, he's going to get killed by the, T the Deathstalker, I don't want that to happen, I want the 10 kills, he's... A little tier 6 TD. He's not going to pen me, guaranteed. I'm going to take the risk and try and get the shot in quicker than him. And unfortunately, that sort of overconfidence and rush to try and get the kill just ended up getting us killed. And we couldn't quite secure the pools medal, which is really sad. Oh, that, that was really frustrating, though. But it is what it is. We still had a great game. Yeah, you know what it is. We won. We had nine kills. Good game. So now we're on the second game. And the second game, we're on this map which is cliff and we are being aggressive and that is because i want to take this middle area on encounter because middle area is a very 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 good position to take but it's incredibly risky and it's sort of that risk reward right because sometimes their team can also yolo in and you will die very quickly and it won't end well but if you do spot the one too you can get a little bit of assistance as well from your team if they're shooting that way but once you get here you can start using this position and getting shots at these guys that are crossing the open. Or like this light tank that I'm trying to get a shot at, but I can't. But it's like, okay, you know what, I'm going to shoot at this hammer. I'm... Yeah, those two shots went somewhere. Yeah, RNG. It's wonderful, isn't it? Yep. So those two shots on the ARL on the hammer, I just... Yeah, I don't know. That that happens at times. If I hadn't had the indecision of trying to go for the Batch at 25T and just gone straight for the hammer in the ARL, I would have got a full clip off there and we would have been off to a great start. But unfortunately, they're still now healthy. But we've got our clip in and we're in the base. So they really have to come to us. But we can still get those side shots on them, which is perfect, which is what we're going to do. We get one into the hammer, waiting for him to back up into position to shoot him again. We get another one into his back end and we finish off the clip into him there. We're up to 1,900 damage. In the first two minutes, we've managed to get those two clips off. And now I'm just, I'm just being mindful, right? We've got that shot into the hammer. I've got to be mindful of what's below me, though. Because if they push, they're going to start getting shots at my ass. And we don't want that. This VK101P is managing to use his super heavy armor and get into a dangerous position. But he's not focusing on me at all. So it's like, well, 
if you're just going to ignore the danger, sir, I will pen you every time. Except for I won't because I should have aimed. Just always aim, people. Always aim. Because auto-aim can let you down just like that. And unfortunately, that meant that... It, well, we're now in an awkward situation where we're reloading and he's still alive. Which is not good. We managed to realise just in time that, that Yahtzee can shoot us from behind. And just before we reload, the HWK-12 thankfully comes to finish off the VK-1 Drew on P. Before he manages to get another shot into us to put us down to basically a one shot for the Yahtzee. But now we're loaded. We know where the Yahtzee is. So it's like, okay, you know what, Mr. Yahtzee, I'm just going to get rid of you. He luckily bounces on us. Unfortunately, we bounce on him. Which means that we're not actually going to be able to kill him. Because, well... Actually, it was more that we got unlucky, he got unlucky, right? Because he probably should have penned us quite easily. But he actually hits our gun. Which meant that just as we fired, he broke the gun. Which meant that our gun was incredibly inaccurate and we missed the shot on him. It's the way RNG goes. It's the way it goes at times. And yeah, it was one of those annoying moments. But it is what it is. We're just waiting for the gun to reload again. We're up to 3.1k damage, 569 assistance. And we're trying to get into a position now where we're ready to dump this clip. This bat chat 12... T is coming in. It's like, well, sir, what are you doing? I'm just going to dump my clip in. Unfortunately, one of those shells doesn't pen, but it does track him in place, which helps the HWK-12 to finish him off. And again, that clip's coming in. I'm just like, please, artillery, don't black me in this position, because this position is a good place to get shot by artillery, or a good place for artillery to shoot you. You don't want that. I'm just, again, being careful of the people along the one line so they can't shoot me, but I'm getting into another position again, ready to dump this clip, and for the moment that I'm loaded, I can get going. But just as we'd say that, the Centurion here that's very, very stock comes out, and it's like, okay, Mr. Centurion, with the Comet gun. We don't like this. We get two nice shots into him. Artillery blapses. Go away, artillery, bro. And you know what? Instead of pushing around that corner and going after him, we're going to reload. We've only got one shell of AP left, so we're going for APCR. We're reloading because that way we'll be fully loaded and ready to go for the Centurion and finish him off. There's no point going around the corner for the Centurion, pumping one shot into him and then going, oh, I'm reloading. So what instead we're going to do is reload the full clip and then we're ready to go finish him off. So that's exactly what we do. We drive round, he misses, we're kind of lucky in that way, and we shut him down. Well, what we were doing there is he can't kill me in a shot. So what I wanted to do was keep moving past him, get to these rocks, then the artillery couldn't hit us again. And that's exactly what happened. Unfortunately enough, we actually managed to spot the artillery on that move as well. Um, we got to shut him down, so get a li rid of that little pesky bugger. But now we're reloading. We've got the IS in front of us. We've got the heavy tank that's behind us. We've got two heavy tanks now at F3. It's like, oh, this is kind of awkward. The King Tiger has to high roll to kill us. The IS can kill us. But now we're loaded. We're going to pump one shot into the King Tiger. Get another shot into him there. And hopefully get one into his driver. And we actually get to finish him off, which is great. We're up to 862 assistance. 6.1k damage. And once again, reloading. But you're seeing in these two games just how deadly this tank can be. Just how quickly it reloads. How quickly it puts out the damage. And if you catch anyone out... They're just gonzo. There's no chance for them whatsoever. They just die. It's such a good tank, the Sergeant Slaughter, and it's probably it's, you know it's fairly OP for a tier eight heavy, because you, it's got good gun handling, it's got good reload, great DPM, great clip potential, mobility's all right, the armor's okay, yeah, solid all round. So now we managed to spot the IKV, get the shot in. Didn't really aim it that well, and we shut him down. We finished the game with 6.4k damage, 862 assistance, the victory, 6 kills. The ace tanker, sniper, high caliber, the top gun, and 2.3, nearly 2.4k base XP. A really nice game for the Sergeant Slaughter T54E2. What a tank. It's just so goddamn good. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.